Speaking of uh, frustrated Johannesburg residents, when it comes to power, now uh, residents of Johannesburg taking to the streets over water shortages. Taps have been running dry for weeks now in some areas. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, the uh, Johannesburg mayor, Cabela Guamanda, uh, called the formation of a task team to help him find solutions to the water crisis. Is it a talk shop? Is something going to come of this? Well, let's head over to Chlonium Tumkulu, uh, who's been seeing a lot of tires burning of late and a lot of angry residents, and it looks like they're still out there, Chloni. Hi, let's come across to you. What are they telling you? Since hearing from the mayor, there's task teams coming uh, into play as well, but not much is being done, is it? Yeah, so Gareth, uh, this morning or early afternoon, the uh, ward councillor for Ward 57, Faiza Chen, did come to address residents of South Hills, this part of South Hills, and she did tell them that the mayor has taken to setting up task teams in the south of Joburg with the different wards in the south of Johannesburg to try and find answers or to get residents to help them find answers, solutions to the water crisis that they're facing. Uh, they also means to kind of help them kind of get dead Line or timelines rather around how you know this will be done, when this will be done, and just basically try and brainstorm how they can work together. Yesterday, we had residents that felt like we appreciate this task team that's being set up. It does seem that the mayor has given thoughts to this problem, but that it's still their responsibility as well. And it's just part of the frustrations that are faced now. We are in South Hills in Ward 57, and roads are starting to be open. This road here is starting to be open. It's Neffen Road in South Hills. It had been blocked off from around 6 o'clock or half past 5 this morning because residents here say they have not had water for more than seven weeks, about 53 days, and they had just reached the end of their tether, I think. They say they're rate payers, and they're not able to access the services that they have asked for, that they are paying for. So um, earlier in the day, you know that they didn't have water and there was no water coming out. But um, you will see, Gareth, that now the uh, Joburg water did come over to the scene and speak to the residents and try to explain to them what is going on. And it seems for now that there is a trickle of water that has come out. Nugu is showing you the hydrant, one of the hydrants on the road that had been checked for the water pressure. And you can see the, uh, the ground is a little bit uh, wet because they had been checking the water pressure and there was water actually coming out. The problem is that the water that is coming out and at the pressure that is coming out, they're still saying that it might not be at a high enough pressure that uh, actual water uh, restoration will happen in the flats around here and in the areas around here. So as much as now the roads are being opened compared to what it was this morning, they're not so sure that actually water supply will be restored to the communities because of the low water pressure. And this is something that Joburg Water has been talking about as well, and even Rand Water. But Joburg Water specifically saying that some of the pumps need to function at a particular percentage of water so that everyone gets their water and below that then it's not possible. So there is some relief, I know, and there was some happiness uh, maybe about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, when this started, uh, when the water started trickling in. Uh, but I don't know if it does mean that, you know, for this evening, and they said it's going to take a few hours actually for all the water supply to be restored, but I don't know if it means that that will actually happen, given that it's actually still pumping at a very low pressure, or if by tomorrow when they wake up, there will not be water. Mm. This has been a problem over the past few days and weeks where people say there's water, there's a trickle of water here and there. When we wake up in the morning, there is no water. And again, it's something that Joburg Water has explained about the pressure as well. So I don't know if um, yeah, there will be water supply that will be actually fully restored, but we are seeing some water that is coming out at the moment. Nine hours or so later since this morning's protest began, Gareth. Yeah, I'm not too sure what that BMW driver was trying to do behind you, but I'm glad you got out the way. I'm not sure where he was going in such a rush. Just watch behind you, uh, Chloni. Uh, the problem, I suppose, with South Hills as well, and it's often an issue out in uh, another area of Joburg, when you're talking about waking up to no water pressure tomorrow, is Northcliffe. It often to do with is where the reservoir is in relation to some of the houses as well. So the houses that are at the top of the hill, South Hills is clearly very hilly. The houses at the top of the hill will take longer to get water. The problem is in the houses at the bottom of the hill, use the water up in the reservoir before it gets to the top. It's an ongoing cycle. But uh, I do understand that you uh, heard from some residents a little bit earlier today as well and uh, give me a sense then of what they were saying to you before you take us uh, to their sound bites. 
Yeah, so, you know, when you talk about the high-lying versus the low-lying area situation, so the residents here were saying, but there are RDP houses next to us and there is a construction site next to us and we're basically on the same level, but they have water and yet we as the residents don't have water. So they're not quite buying some of that and some of the other reasons that are given for what is happening. So I think just uh, people are feeling like it doesn't make sense that some people next to us have water and other places next to us don't have water and it's just a bit of a discrepancy so it's just I think there's just a lot of sort of mistrust uh, in terms of what is happening but um, let us hear right from the residents themselves this morning there was quite a lot of frustration from the residents for not having water for more than 50 days everybody's is, 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 is fed up there's really nothing there's no water. you can imagine the, the toilet yeah, everything stinks in the house you yeah, understand so now it's only problem in hygiene and the problem in health isn't as exacerbated in Jericho. So we were forced to get to the point of tires. Most people here now are born are not really tired people. Nah, nah. So we decided people didn't go to work today. People have stopped going to work. We even had to close other people in, which are equal right, but it's a means to an end. A lot of us are affected by this. I mean, I have to travel myself with my vehicle, having to go and fetch water uh, from my in-laws. Other people are not that privileged because in terms of the water tankers, we are privileged to even see some of the tankers traveling or going to places, um, standing in front of people's homes. In this particular section, water tankers are coming um, from time to time, but on the other side of South Hills, the greater side, close to Montanas and the upper areas, we hardly even see tankers. And where I stay, there is old age homes that are there. And how do the old people, how do they manage in terms of the... Um, this in, in terms of sanitary way and so forth. How do that people manage? How do they manage in terms of health? I mean, they, you can't even see, you can't, you, you can't bear old people carrying big buckets of water or even small buckets of water by themselves. They can't manage. So how do we manage ourselves not having water for, what, almost two, going three months right now? It is just disastrous. We can't manage at all. All right, so Cloney, that was a little bit earlier this morning. If you're still with me, let me just ask you then, uh, timeline-wise. So the residents, they're hearing from the mayor. There's this task team that's going to be in place. Uh, so for the moment, protests are called off. Is that my understanding? And for how long? How long are they giving authorities till they get very unhappy again? Yeah, so these specific residents here had said that if they, their water supply is not restored today, then they would up uh, things and they would go to possibly the construction site or somewhere else to protest. So again, with just the water situation being explained to us and the water supply situation explained that it's not still pumping at a high enough pressure for water to possibly be restored to everyone. And even then, you're going to have to wait a few more hours to see actually if everyone does get their water supply back. I wonder what is actually going to happen uh, and if they will stop protesting. I know uh, on Monday we were in Robert Ham, we were in uh, Brixton as well and they had said that if they didn't protest like the following day, which they didn't do, they had thoughts of going to possibly the uh, mayor's office. Now that the mayor has been to the Robert Ham community, I think that part will be, uh, will be eased off. But I know the mayor had also said that he would be visiting Brixton as well, the community of Brixton. So maybe that will ease some of the frustration but I think ultimately generally people are saying at the end of the day they just want their water supply back and so as much as they are getting the attention of Joburg Water coming here, the ward councillor, the mayor of Johannesburg, it's not really doing much to restore their water supply which is what they want at the end of the day and I'm not sure that this is the end of the protest we're seeing. I mean on Monday one protest was seen um, on our screens uh, in the morning which sparked another protest so I think there's, we might be seeing a lot more of those protests as people become frustrated with sort of the explanations with the conversations and the engagements that aren't yielding tap uh, water in the taps, Gareth. Yeah, because in the end, let's not forget, we're talking about a basic human right. We're talking about water. They don't have it. They want it. They pay for it. They're not getting it. Kloni and Tumkulu, thank you very much. Uh, we'll come back to you again a little bit later in the day. Otherwise, look, for, uh, look out for her full report, and she'll keep a close eye on that part of Johannesburg for us. Now,